we're going on this journey from day one. We said it's sharing our journey of discovery through song and story. And that's artists sharing their journey of discovery, us, the community, the community that forms coming together here on these Wednesday nights. And so thank you very much for sharing in that journey of discovery. Yes. And Tales from the Tavern is so, so thrilled to bring back to our stage yeah. Maria Moldau. Maria Moldau. How's everybody feeling tonight? We're so happy to be back here at Tales of the Tavern. This was one of our favorite gigs ever.
so important more than ever for people to come, I mean, to keep live music alive. Yeah, people can Spotify and YouTube and, you know, and get music on their phone and their wristwatch and all, all these different, you know, technologies to kind of click and hear music, but it is not the same thing as coming out in person and coming together in community yeah. to hear music, to enjoy music, to share, enjoy each other's company and to you know, to just have some kind of communal spirit. Yep. Right now we'd like to do one that uh, that I learned from a wonderful blues man named Elvin Bishop. Are you all familiar with Elvin? Yeah, you're right. Well, I've been knowing him a long time and he's still going strong, still playing great, writing great songs. I heard him do this a few years ago and I said, Elvin, I gotta record that song because I just bet with the big old mess going on in this that folks would relate to it. It's called, I'll be so glad when I get my groove back again.
songs have different moods and different stories and I guess in the end you're telling a story you know it, it doesn't matter how fabulous your voice is or or you know some people have are gifted to have like really you know adept voices and beautiful tone and then other people like one of my all-time favorites, Bob Dylan, you wouldn't exactly say he was blessed with, you know, the voice of Enrico Caruso or, but... Although but, he yeah. said he could hold his breath longer, right? Wasn't that... The <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, but he, 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 even though now he has like a shred of a voice, I still find that so expressive. He really moves me. I bring him up because even though he doesn't do a lot of fancy stuff with his voice. He puts such intention into it that, that it's very moving. I have made, I, I just finished recording my 41st album. Uh, that, you know, so since, since Midnight at the You Know What, that's about one a year, uh, almost one a year. But when, but when I was recording my first several albums in uh, in, in L.A. Uh, for Warner Brothers. Whoever I asked for, they would just bring into the studio, and I found myself working with all kinds of great musicians, David Lindley, Ry Cooter, and, and, a, and a funky old guitar player called... Uh, no, he wasn't a guitar player. He wasn't a guitar player. A piano player called Dr. John. <laughs> And, uh, and it, it was just a dream come true to get to work with all these great guys. And so uh, when I was recording my first album, of course I don't write any songs, but I know how to find good songs. And we were, you know, searching around to find good songs. And one day, Dr. John comes shuffling into the studio and he says, Hey, Maria, he said, I think I got a song for you. It hurts to talk. <laughs> anyway. And he pulled out a cassette and played me this wonderful little blues uh, called Don't You Feel My Leg? And told me it was been written by and recorded by this uh, wonderful blues woman from New Orleans named Blue Lou Barker. And so we recorded the song. And, uh, and even though Midnight at the Oasis was the one that was the big hit uh, and was on the chart for months and months and got, eventually got nominated for Grammys and and, and this and that, several Grammys in a couple of different categories. But anyway, but we found that both DJs reported in and from the response we got in the audience that Don't You Feel My Leg actually got more requests. And to this day, it gets a lot of requests. So we always do it at every performance because people want to hear it. And um, so anyway, so... <laughs> After, you know, after the record had been out a while, of course, everyone who had written a song on the album was, was owed royalty money. So we wrote out a check for Blue Lou and her husband, Danny Barker, who was a, a guitar player, and um, tried and uh, sent, contacted the publishing company uh, to see where to send it. And they said, oh, they're deceased. Send it to us. So we talked to Dr. John about that, and he said, deceased, he said, the f they are. He said, I just seen them on Boybin Street three weeks ago. So, so we, with his help, we got the right contact info and sent them the first of what would be many royalty checks. And they were thrilled about this because they were already in their late 60s. They had done most of their recording in the, in the late 30s and early 40s. And, uh, and they were fixtures on the New Orleans 
music scene for decades and decades. Danny Barker played uh, guitar with the likes of Cab Calloway, Louis Armstrong, Billie Holiday, just to name a few, and uh, was very instrumental, by the way, in kind of reviving the whole brass band thing that's uh, become popular again now. But anyhow, so when I went down to New Orleans, I met them and we, we really hit it off and we became good friends and I sent them a gold record which they proudly displayed in their living room and every time I go down there, I visit them and so forth. And um, sadly, they passed away in the late 90s. They had been married 67 years. <laughs> anyway, so uh, because of my... Be but they're, they were beloved by the music community and so they, they have a little festival for them every year in honor of Danny and Blue Lou. So a couple of years ago, they asked me to come down and do a, a tribute concert for Blue Lou Barker. And I, I was delighted to be asked and started to look around for tunes at, with the help of my piano player, Chris Burns here, who <laughs> he can find anything on the internet. The Russians have nothing on him. Anyway, so we dug around, and to our delight and total surprise, we discovered that Blue Lou and Danny Barker had written dozens and dozens of songs equally naughty and bawdy and funny and clever as Don't You Feel My Leg. And so we put together the material. I went to New Orleans, put together a killer band, and uh, did, did the concert, and after the concert, Everybody came swarming up to the CD table and said, well, which is the CD that has those songs we just heard? And in that moment, I realized we should record these songs and share them with the world. So I uh, finally pulled it all together and recorded it this June. It's been out about a month. It's called Don't You Feel My Leg, The Naughty Body Blues of Blue Lou Barker. And, um, and, uh, it, it's uh, the thing I discovered about her was that she uh, that she because I had only heard a couple of recordings was that she had a very not a big belting voice you know, like a lot of blues singers do but she had more of a laid back kind of coy understated delivery and um, actually one of the things we found out to our surprise was that Billie Holiday is quoted as saying Blue Lou Barker was her main influence, which is like, you know, I didn't know that, but when you listen to her recordings, you can hear, you can definitely hear what Billie picked up from her. Anyway, so, and she had a real sassy attitude, and so we're good, and the songs are great fun, so we, we thought we'd do a few of them for you right now. So. <laughs> Here's one called, Leave My Man Alone. so big, lay off of my guy or I'll rip off your wig, you ain't doing any better, doing any better. you're just making conversation, breaking conversation. You ain't doing any better, so leave my man alone, my guy ain't so handsome, he gambles a lot, he comes to see me cause he likes what I got, you ain't doing any better, doing any better. you're just gambling through your bonnet. Ain't doing any better, so leave my man alone. Just full of malarkey. 
Doesn't matter how many fancy notes you're playing, if you don't, if the grooves aren't right, it ain't happening. What I love about the Blue Loo material is there's a lot of syncopation in it, and if everybody's playing just right and just the right groove, I can kind of lean any way I want and just kind of ride on the top of that and make up my own little rhythms against it, you know, but yet flowing on top of it. So. That's very important. Yeah. Without the groove, it ain't nothing. All right, well, what, this stuff is so much fun. I just enjoy doing it so much. Anyway, uh, well, one of the things I like about the, all the early blues, and, and I've studied them and, and delved into them and explored them and sung them for years, uh, is that uh, back in the day, the, they, uh, they expressed their sexuality with great fun and, and joy and, and humor. And, and, but the, the lyrics weren't as in your face, explicit and X-rated as a lot of today's lyrics are. They kind of they left more to the imagination, which, and somebody said imagination is the greatest aphrodisiac, so. But um, for instance, this song, Actually, which wasn't written by them, it was uh, the first person I know that recorded this was Louis Armstrong way, way back in the day. But uh, it's a song called The Georgia Grind. Now, what is The Georgia Grind? Is it, is it a dance craze? Or is it a naughty sex act that is so naughty that we can only allude to it through innuendo and double entendre? I'll leave it up to you to decide. He says he votes for number two. <laughs> okay, so here it is, the Georgia grind. Mama, mama, look at Sills. She's out in the backyard doing that twist. She's doing a job.
Georgia grind. Georgia grind. That old Georgia grind. Georgia grind. She's still raving. Was feeble and well. She was caught downtown and she was grinding like hell doing that Georgia grind. Georgia grind. That old Georgia grind. Georgia grind. She hollered hey, 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 and kept on doing the Georgia grind. Old Uncle Moses was sick in bed. All the doctors said he would need me dead from doing the Georgia grind. Georgia grind. That old Georgia grind. Georgia grind. He went crazy doing that old Georgia grind. He did the Georgia grind. Ronnie Smith on the drums. Chris Burns on the piano. Well, this might be my favorite of all the of all the new tunes. This when I think that, you know, I, 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 Blue Lou Barker and her husband Danny Barker, they wrote songs that were like songs by hipsters for hipsters. And when I think that they recorded this stuff in the late 30s and early 40s, I'm thinking how, sh how shocked people must have been. It, you know, because this stuff was beyond risque, really, but uh, never vulgar. Uh, here's one called Loan Me Your Husband.
his turkey He couldn't even get me out on bail I want your husband I know that it's not right No need for us to fight Oh, don't you be so selfish Music is so fun. It's so lighthearted, you know. Yeah. In this time when sexual matters are are being treated so seriously, and the whole issue is so fraught with with issues, you know what I mean. This kind of harkens back to a more lighthearted, playful attitude towards sexuality, and where things are just sort of implied and not overly explicit and and never vulgar, but just playful. playful yeah. yeah, imagine that. Well, I, I'm sure y'all are fan, big fans of Bonnie Raitt, right? Yay! What's not to love about Bonnie? I, I've known her since 1970, and we're, we're like sisters, and uh, we both share a, a very wonderful experience in that we both at different times got to perform with and record with a, one of the original Queens of the Blues that recorded in the 20s and early 30s. Sippy Wallace, do you remember? Uh, and and Bonnie, one of the, Bonnie recorded one of her songs that remains a favorite of her fans to this day uh, called Don't Advertise, well, it's called Women Be Wise, Don't Advertise Your Man, you remember that one? Well, this is Blue Lou Barker's version of that same message, and it's called Never Brag About Your Man or you will be without your man. Never break about your man Or you will be without your man Sonny always did those lovely things he should but he quit the day I bragged that he was good I regret the things I said I guess I must have swelled his head Cause since I bragged about him he ain't worth a dime Outside demonstrating takes up all his time Never brag about your man Or you will be your man Now if your man can beat a drum and beat it good, just keep it mum I brag he had the greatest rhythm stick in town It was the cue for every chick to hang around Now if he blows above I see Keep it quiet as can be Cause if you don't, some gal will take him off your hands You can't always be there on those one night stands Never brag about your man Or you will be without your man
say your man is grand Especially if he leads the band Now if he's got good rhythm Always say he's wrong For if you don't you will not have your lead along If he knows just how to swing Tell them he don't know what So the material has its own life to it. That's what, otherwise, how could you do a song that was written 50 years ago and you have to bring it to life right. every night? Right. And so I really get into the lyrics and then I yeah. just animate the whole scenario of the song. Are y'all having a good time tonight? All right. All right, well. So that was a little of Louisiana music because it's, you know, kind of bluesy, kind of r and b kind of Louisiana-y, and kind of funky. But right now, I'd like to come around the corner and play a bona fide, stonified blues for you. Do we have any blues lovers here tonight? All right. This one is written by the late, great Percy Mayfield, who, as some of you might know, was Ray Charles's cousin and wrote a lot of Ray's early hits. He wrote Hit the Road Jack, The Danger Zone, a lot of cool songs. But this one has always been my favorite of his. At, um, and he wrote it in the early 50s during the last Cold War. Too bad we still have to be singing about this shit today. But um, anyway, what I love about the song is that he managed to wrap up into one little song, a very fervent and heartfelt prayer for world peace. And yeah, let's hear it for world peace. Let's... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. And personal love fulfillment. And I can't think about two things I'd rather be praying about. I don't know about you people around here. So I'm going to send this out tonight to anybody, man or woman, young or old, of any kind of persuasion, that just might have this on their heart and mind this evening. Because it's called, please. Oh, Lord, please. Send me someone
Cause I know when you know people Peace on earth ain't just gonna happen Till everybody's hate and greed are gone But if it's not as
y'all are looking up here thinking what is she going on about up there is she all right well people whoa y'all looking at a woman that's got the blues real bad tonight and sometime when you get the blues this bad there ain't nothing left to do but just kind of steal off by yourself. Yeah. Go on up in your room. Get down on your knees and just start to pray about it. And when you prayed and prayed all you can pray, maybe you just... You know, you run out of words, or maybe you just not sure that the message got all the way on through. Well, then sometimes Sometime. there ain't nothing left to do but just get real quiet in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And just kind of... Just kind of, mm, yes. mm, mm, mm. I mean, sometimes, sometimes there ain't nothing left to do well. but just kind of mourn about it sometimes. It gets like that sometimes. Whoa, Lord. get infused with joy once I'm up there the, one of the guys plays something really hip or just we get into a little groove together I just it just lifts me and and then I'll, and we pray every night before we go on we pray that we all play as one as one spirit and one soul and that we go out there and uplift people I think people, uh, you know, I've always had good bands and I always try to sing my best and I have good songs so I usually have gotten, you know, nice comments at the end of my show. Oh, I love your voice, or I love such and such a song, we love your band. Now, in the last two years, people come up to me and say, I'm uplifted. Thank you. Yeah. I needed that. You know, it's much more than just entertainment. We, right. We're consciously trying to uplift people because there's some heavy clouds overhead, you know? Thank you. All right, now for the next song. I never know how to introduce this song because to tell the truth, I've never heard one anything like it before or since. It's definitely the weirdest song I ever heard. But, but I guess there's one thing I could say, and that is it was very good for me. And as they occasionally remember to ask,
love what I do. People ask me if I'm going to retire and I'm going, why should I retire? I love what I do. So as long as I keep thinking of new, new projects and new ideas, I, I think I'll just keep going. Oh, I want to introduce the band to you. Over there playing bass with his left hand and fabulous piano with his right hand. My right and left hand man for many years, Chris Burns on the keys. Back there on the drums, beating out those passionate, swampy rhythms of love. Give it up on the drums and beautiful vocals for Ronnie Smith. And last but not least, playing the blues from the bottom of his shoes. Give it up on guitar for Craig Caffle. How about it one more time for the queen of Louisiana herself, Miss Maria Malda! Thank you, thank you so much. You guys have been a great audience. And we want to thank Ron for inviting us back, and we hope you've enjoyed yourself this evening. And, and so we'll end up with a song that, um, why it just happens to be the title of my new album. And it's called, Don't You Feel My Leg. If you feel my leg, you ain't gonna be able to 
just my plump little thighs You feel my thighs Honey, it's gonna get you high So don't you feel my thighs James Brown. May he rest in peace. Remember how he always used to go, hit me, bam. Oh, it gives you I can tell why he liked to do that. Watch this. Talking about my plump, yet oh so firm. I mean my silky smooth. I mean my luscious satiny. I mean my fine Italian. I mean, don't you dare touch it, baby. Cause you know it don't belong to you. I mean my little So love one another. 